Hi, Rick. How are you? Hi, Ed. Good evening. How are you doing? Been, man. It's been some time. It's Welcome been a while. back to the show, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, How man. are you? It's always good How to be well. hanging out with you, buddy. Yeah, it's really good to see you again. I think we're going to have a we really great some, show for everybody uh, good tonight. Stuff to talk about, you know. Absolutely. If you gentlemen don't mind to sit down in those chairs. <coughs> yeah, we've, we've got a peanut that. gallery over here. We've got, a, we've got a little bit of a crowd going and uh, just uh, wrapping up. We have a great, interesting show tonight. Um, At least we Very interesting is. things going on with the world. There's a lot of parental control software out there, and it's got a lot of issues, and uh, we need to tell you about it. Uh, but the show is going to primarily be about artificial intelligence. Yep, yep. The computer's and, uh, doing the thinking. Computer's doing the thinking and how it's getting there. We're going to break it down a little bit to simplify what AI actually is from a technical level. Mm -hmm. and how it's getting there. Uh, Lockheed Martin has an interesting story. Future hurdles that have to be you know, met, you know, things that have to happen before we really get to intelligent computers. Right. Um, we're going to be talking about the good and the bad of that, <coughs> uh, the good, bad, and ugly of artificial intelligence. I can't wait for the ugly part. Um, and, and then we're going we're gonna to try to pull up this really interesting Intel report mm -hmm. that talks about edge computing that becomes AI computing mm -hmm. and how that gets integrated and how Lockheed Martin and everybody's achieving that in their own kind of ways. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Rick, what you been up to? Tell us about yourself oh, again. What have I been up to? Let's see. Uh, hanging out with my kid. Uh, hanging out with my girlfriend, hanging out with my buddy Nick over here. Nick, um, how are you? Uh, Nick, what's going on? Everybody? Let me uh, pull these guys up yeah. here for a second. And, uh, and I definitely hey, got to Scott. Hey, definitely hey. got to get together with Scott real soon. Hi, uh, yeah. Scott's over here. We, uh, we did dinner a couple of months ago. We got to definitely get together again. Um, it's m my best friend Nick. He's a uh, engineer. He's uh, all around and super intelligent human being. Okay. Um, and uh, and really really proud to have this guy as a buddy of mine. Um, he's uh, definitely definitely an interesting character. I can't wait to hear his quips and and, and, and his thoughts as we go forward tonight. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Scott, tell us a little bit about you. You're an engineer extraordinaire. Oh yeah. Audio engineering, IT work. Oh, you're so humble, sir. Having a good time. Great you're shoes, so, bro. You're so humble. Nice. They look like they look like galoshes. Sweet, sweet. Excellent. They, they, they'll get wet, right? And, and no, they, waterproof. I'm saying they're waterproof. Yeah, you they can waterproof. get wet. Actually, it's still totally like Spider-Man. Yeah, those are those are really nice. You've been wearing those. Those are really slick looking. Yeah, yeah. No um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wear those Merrells. Um, those Merrells are super comfortable. I don't know. And you don't have to like lace them up. Right I got now. goo in my hair. Goo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's Ed, Ed told me that I have to wear my hair like this because if I put it in a ponytail, he doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm being marginalized. <laughs> look, I'm being, look, I'm look, being look, objectified. Look, 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 look you, ha you have nice hair, okay? <laughs> Don't just mess with your mouth. But, uh, but, but for all those guys who wanted to grow their hair long in high school, <coughs> you know what I mean? I had and the whole almost mullet, at 60. You know, and you still got to <laughs> So it probably takes a lot of work, you know? Actually, no, it's just a uh, towel dry and throw some goop in it. That's it. <laughs> mm. Does everybody from behind, uh, excuse me, miss? What's that? Does anybody receive from behind and say, excuse me, miss? Uh, yeah, oh, that's happened when it was longer. I mean, recently, you know, it was down to here. I cut it. Oh, man. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, like, you know, from behind at the store and something like that. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, turn around. It's like with the goatee and, you know, like the, what they call it, soul patch, mm. right? Uh, mm. I, I have another word for it, which I can't repeat here. Wow, but you won't be making that mistake with uh, AI and an implant. Negative. The Negative. implant will know whether you're male. But we're gonna, won't be male we're probably, female. you know, this is, everybody, I just wanted to, you know, talk to the audience here. Oh, could, is there any way we could get the chat up there? Uh, um, yeah, if you guys can pull the chat up. Uh, the, I, um, because I'm actually, I'm actually of the thinking yes. that this AI stuff is a little scary and, I'm, and it doesn't make me happy at all. Okay. All right. So, so we're no going to have a little back and forth yet. about this, brother. Okay. No one's chatting yet. But uh, AI is an interesting situation. Uh, we've got uh, some interesting information about AI and how it works. Let's jump right into it and uh, start with our tech news. I can't wait to talk about the AI stuff. So let's start with a little tech news first. Yeah, yeah, let's do the tech news. This is my favorite okay. part of the yeah. show, actually. should save it for the end, but I like front-loading it, actually. Yeah, I like it. Um, so this is basically Lockheed Martin's um, take on 
um, AR and artificial intelligence. Um, yeah. They're going to weaponize it. Yeah. Uh, That's what's what we your want take to do, on right? Lockheed Martin and uh, their take on weaponizing artificial What could possibly go wrong teaching a computer how to be weaponized and kill people? What could possibly go wrong here? I'm just a little scared about this, man. Well, well, I, well, well, when you look at the website, right? Yeah. I'm just saying, when you look at the website, there's a section in it that talks about decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and going back to the, 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 the movie um, with Matthew Broderick, um, was that uh, War, Games. War Games. Thanks, mm -hmm. Scotty. The, uh, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. I just saw it last week um, for the 184th time. <laughs> the, uh, it, it, when you take the humans out of the decision making yeah. and, and a computer can just like arbitrarily like bomb other, you know, like, like real living people, that's, that to me sounds a little dangerous. I mean, like maybe it's me. Sure, you know? it's dangerous, but isn't it inevitable for us to go down that road? What I mean, happens when the computer identifies us as the enemy? I mean, that could happen conceivably, right? Sure, I mean, but we're the enemy already because if we want to turn off a computer, we can. If it, we're not talking about conscious. something we could just kick the plug out of the wall, you know well, what I mean? We can this is at this point. No. Well, at this point, sure. But, you know, but eventually, if it finds it as a threat, it's not going to be so happy with us. Um, and my question is, what happens when you've got a computer that doesn't want to be turned off? Well, what happens to a baby when it realizes it could be killed? That's a human. That's a human. Different. But we're mimicking human behavior. Well, I, I just say that the uh, the whole abortion discussion is definitely for another night. Yeah. Um, we're not going to talk about SCOTUS's decision tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, whether you agree with it or not, I, I I think I think that the idea this is just my feeling. It's just like it's, uh, a moral type of feeling about mm -hmm. a stance. Mm -hmm. Is that I think that that you know when you you empower a computer to think it's okay to kill a human being, that's a dangerous step. That that once that computer develops artificial intelligence and it actually starts thinking and develops a consciousness, which is inevitable, we can agree, that sooner or later, you know, with quantum computing, that it computers will get, will get there where it's doing more calculations in the human brain. I happen to think that a computer to actually gain consciousness as we know it, we probably have to be about four or five times as powerful as a human brain as far as like how many synapses can go off at the sure, same time. Sure, sure, and you can get a really down that rabbit hole, but look, for example, Lockheed Martin is starting this off on a good foot. If you're watching the screen, here's four, four cool AI technologies that you're trying to overcome. Okay, now how find wild fires, mm -hmm. find ice cream shops, we know that's very important for the yeah, federal yeah, government. Yeah, yeah, I know that the, the, the military needs to find their ice cream. Sure, the federal government and certain leaders need their ice cream. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah, we got Airplanes, ships, blue cars, and more. So Lockheed Martin's driving the bus here in finding and fighting fires faster by using artificial intelligence to, to do that, you know. Uh, help find your car. Help find anything you need. Based on patterns and what I you've done. I don't know, man. I, you know, if I um, can't find my own car, perhaps I should just go back to the old age home, you know, and like hang out, mm -hmm. you know, and look for my remote. Don't you find it a little interesting that Lockheed Martin used the ice cream example? I found it kind of obscene. All right, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, listen, listen. I th I think Lockheed Martin having this technology is fantastic. Okay. That now, but what if it's a Chinese company or a Russian company? You know, one of one of our one of our adversaries that has their own Lockheed Martin or their own like space works inside sure of their country, sure and they do. they're doing the same thing. Well, listen, who said the ice cream was any better over there than over here? It so. probably isn't. You know, we do have the market cornered on ice cream. So, Personally, know. my favorite is all, any flavor of Ben and Jerry's, but that's just me. Detecting changing data faster. So as data changes and big. Uh, things alter with the environment or IoT devices are changing, it could detect and react faster. I think, uh, I work with, with business intelligence all day long. Mm -hmm. um, I run the systems that support business intelligence okay. and, and that kind of, those kind of operations. Okay. Okay. Got it. And I think that, you know, we're, right now we're getting to a point where that is, that's driving our websites, our, the contents. Think about when you go on to like anything like Facebook. Just, let's say, a, the day before you were searching for dishwashers and you, were, you made a purchase on PCRichards.com, let's say. Okay. And, and he, 
and now you're on Facebook the next day, and Facebook is t- you know showing you ads about how awesome is that? Completely dryers. personalized for yourself. How freaking awesome is, is that? Is it an invasion of privacy? Well, listen, you know, um, it, it depends. It's a fifty-fifty. It? Yeah, there's there's a, there's a there's a scale that that, that, that these you can tools were meant to improve humanity. The these tools were created. Uh, detecting data faster, you know, has benefits to react and do things in a quicker way than letting people die, for instance. And, yeah, and showing you relevant content on a website, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But th- there's also privacy concerns. Now, mm-hmm. and if, you, if you're concerned about privacy, you should do what I do, use alternate browsers. Right. Right? I've got right. three different browsers on my laptop, right? And I use everything I do at work is in Edge. Everything I do for personal is in Chrome, and when I want to hide myself, you know, like, and not show anybody anything, sure. you know, and but like just, look something just, up that I yeah. like. Let's say I'm doing some research, yeah. I maybe open up uh, let's a, just stay an incognito on AI window for a second. Go ahead, because I think that that's what the whole idea of the show is. You know, so teaching AI to do AI is the main thing that I think Lockheed is kind of uh, leading the way on it. So. Machine learning and AI is the key thing there. So they have these devices on humans. They have these devices in the field. Then they have device routers that capture the data called right. edge devices. Mm-hmm. And now they're looking at the <coughs> patterns. And then after researching these patterns, they write code. And code writers make decisions of how to have the machine react automatically based on the patterns it measured from those devices interacting and their information captured on these edge routers. So teaching AI to do AI is the analysis of all of that and turning it into a decision-making system. I think um, taking a a website, let's say like uh, Amazon.com and studying, the the, the website is studying you Mm -hmm. And based on things that you've bought in the past, here's some other stuff that's kind of relevant to it. Yes. Right? Yes. That's kind of cool. Okay? Uh, nothing wrong with that. All right? But when it goes from from platform to platform and it follows you, like when you're sitting there on your phone and you signed in as the same user in Chrome mm-hmm. as you, you are on your computer, yeah. you know, it's a little much coming at you. You know? And I don't know how the average person feels about that. I mean, please, chime in on the chat by all means. But... The, I feel that, that I don't need the computer sitting there suggesting a different kind of cat food for my cat or su- suggesting, you know, hey, maybe you need this other tool because I bought some, some kind of tool for fixing up my house. Um, sure, but consider all of the data that's going to exist. It's already tremendous amount of data. The AI will help you make that decision faster. You don't have to sit there and spend human time deciphering all these options that exist. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I still think it's up to the human to make those decisions. Um, that's that's just, you know, the way I feel about it. You know, I'm I'm the computer guy, the the geek, you know, see my shirt, trust me, I'm a geek. Um, I actually I actually am a, a computer person. I'm 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 every bit a geek, but I also believe that computers shouldn't do some things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've had, we've had this discussion, like, many times, like, personally, like, just, you know, talking about things like this. You're all for becoming a Borg. Well, we're too far down the rabbit hole. And not only you that. You feel like there's no turning back. There's no turning back. And the science fiction writers have already laid out our future for us. I, I think science fiction s- writers throughout Earth always predicted the future? And In a lot of ways, they have. have yep, I mean? yep. They so, have Asimov, so it's there. You know, they, they, you know, all sorts, uh, all sorts of books uh, that were written, stories that were written years yeah, ago, yeah. have come true in various sorts yes. of ways. And remember, the Borg Queen wanted to be the Borg Queen. Well, she didn't want to be human. Well, there you go. So some of them were voluntary. I think, I think that you, you it, right now, if you go to the average person, here's, here's, here's my point. I'm going to try to make this point. I'm going to try to convince Ed on the, to, to believe as I believe. Let's see how this one goes. Uh, if, if, how do you feel personally about a human being being cloned today? Well, if who they're takes themselves clone, out of you and we make another Ed? If they're going to clone people who know how to drive the car on the expressway, 
Count me in, buddy. <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry to go there, but you know what I mean. Like I can't argue on. with that logic. You I know. Okay. I can't. I can't argue with that logic. But I mean, isn't that the whole point of genetics is to uh, make better people? Make better people. Isn't uh, there a Darwinism reality to this conversation? Uh, now, didn't you know Roddenberry saying? cover this with Space Seed in the original series of Star mm -hmm. Trek? Okay. Okay. And then with the Wrath of Khan with the movie. Wrath of Khan. Right? Yes. The eugenics wars. Remember Wrath right? of Khan. We yeah, make better people, and also. Guy with it. Ah! And now all of a sudden, all these better people are going to want to rule over us, not so better people. All right. Well, listen. You know, it's do you coming. think that's a natural procession better. of things you that can... they should rule because they're better, <laughs> genetically enhanced, stronger, well, faster, why, smarter? That's why Elon Musk thought of this and came up with the Neuralink, which allows you to compete with this machine. Why do we need to compete with machines? See, I'm going to I'm going to take the devil's advocate because here. I'm going to play need devil's to advocate. With the here. machine where it's inevitable for us to create this machine, and now we have to. Def defend against it. It's like in the movies, man. <coughs> What's it's that, like in the Aliens. Hold on. What was that Aliens episode when they made that crazy white alien and the doctor's like, look at <coughs> when it ate its head? Alien 3, I think it was. Yeah, probably. So, you know. I think that while <laughs> some things are definitely needed and definitely a positive, create, let, let's say cloning a liver Mm -hmm. And being able, a person being able to, to, to give some of his cells yes. to a bunch of doctors. Yes. And let's say he needs a liver transplant. Transplant In a couple of weeks, now they got a liver that can be put into his body and yeah. save his life. Isn't that a great idea? Yes. Right? Okay. But what happens when the obvious thing that happens when you want to do the whole human? Okay. One Rick Navone is quite enough for the world. Well, listen, I that's don't think opinion. we need another one. I think every, my friends would agree with I'm me. I'm sorry, here. it's subjective. Um, <coughs> some I'm people, sure there's a lot of people on my block list who would also agree. Some people want nothing to do with it, all right? But there are obviously, this, these products are being made for handicapped people, humans who have disabilities, where these machines people. help them. There's the positive side. There's the positive there's side. A, there is a, that's what I'm saying. There is a positive the side. best ice cream known to mankind. And as long as we can create the artificial intelligence to find New York fudge chunk, yes. you tell me where that Ben & Jerry's flavor is, and, and I'm going to love you. I love, okay? I love already every already time created. I go to look for it, <laughs> it's Very not there. Gluten-free ice cream. Anyway, oh, God. Um, have some sawdust with your yeah, ice cream. Um, yeah. Let, let, let me go back to the uh, cyber news for a second because I missed an important part here, guys. A little quick on the uh, on our cyber warfare. Yeah, because we couldn't wait to talk about it. Right? I know, we couldn't wait to talk about cyber <laughs> warfare. Just real quick, I mentioned this at the beginning interlude here. Um, these are the parental control apps that could expose your children to private, uh, to your kids' private data. So it's pretty surprising that this kind of data is coming out now. Not only can it expose your children's private data to companies that, that maybe should not have it. Mm -hmm. It also presents a, a, an issue because you're probably using the same computer where it's also giving your information. Bullet to point these. number one, sir, the child monitoring apps that are tracking parents too. Mm -hmm. So right on the money, sir. I, I did um, read the article. Yes, we read it ahead of time <laughs> just to prepare for the show. It's what we do here. We're getting yes, ready. we show prep. Um, in their cyber news research, they noticed that that there's 10 different child monitor apps found the Google Play Store that had some vulnerabilities in it. Now, in some of these apps, they actually took links that went to weird stuff. Mm -hmm. They were capturing data. They were asking questions. Yep. Yep. And, yeah, they found out through your kid, oh, we're going on vacation for a whole month. No yeah. one's going to be here except for the dog. Right. It's probably not the best thing when these guys are keeping a hold of it. You know, there's a now, lot of things Now, one thing do. I thought was interesting in this article, too, yeah. which, which which really caught my eye, mm -hmm. was that the company that's selling you the app yeah. is using a third party to gather and, and warehouse your data. That's a critical thing. We're going to be talking about second and third parties. Right? Which was part of the Facebook trial. How do you know how to trust those people? The Facebook trial said several hundred of the third-party vendors. Exactly. Vendors that Facebook hired <coughs> for us users to play video games or right. do dating uh, things and ask survey questions and do funny Facebook things. 
Those yeah, like my Zynga poker, people, don't make fun of Zynga. We're not restricted in any way, and we're able to take our data to the point where it created a, a fairly large situation. And they you know? weren't bound under any contractual agreement not to do that. So here is this interesting group called the Mobile Security Framework Benchmark, the MOBS. It's a, uh, one of the best acronyms I've seen in a long time. The MOBS. MOBS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so they may not must not be from from the United That's, States. Uh, I, I, but I, the MOBS group. I keep, I keep thinking about F Troop, <laughs> the burglar <laughs> from Banff. <laughs> so their common security analysis tool determined apps privacy and security fitness. Is it working out enough? The score ranges from zero to a hundred. A hundred represents the best score one can get. Below, you'll find apps that Cyber News analyzed that had the MOPS score that were pretty bad. Yeah, in the 20s and 30s. So, you know, let's take a look here. Ooh, phone tracker by numbers. Hopefully nobody's using that guy. Here's a little scorecard from lowest going up there. Uh, now, now they, they also gave him, like, letter bad. grades, and the phone tracker by number actually got a big, giant F. F. <laughs> yes, and it goes to better and better. But there is no best. Let's just uh, read what it says here. Phone tracker by number uh, scored the worst by 25 points. And um, that's pretty interesting. i got to tell you something about that, too. Because, of course, I see that's the worst, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to look it up, and I, and I read some reviews online about yeah. it, right? And the, but just hang on a second. They, you can't get rid of it. Even if it's installed on your computer and you, you go to uninstall it, it yeah. stays installed in the background. Yes, yes. There's things you, a professional can do if you pay money to an IT guy. Yeah. But most of the time, just blow it out and never install those yep, machines. Yep. It's like a virus. Um, so take a look. Just like you said, they got a big fat <coughs> F there. Um, phone tracker, what were they doing for our, for us? So um, we installed this, and we were going to track our kids to see who they're talking to on the phone. Mm -hmm. Due to insecure implementation of the secure socket layer SSL, which is a um, secure layer where users come inside, um, the certificate handling uh, is vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks, meaning that vendors can jump in and see the conversation going back and forth just uh t as uh, to take oh a, a, a side note here you know a little moment of rick explains ssl for a second yes please. ssl very simply for the, anyone that doesn't know it's a, a digital certificate that gets uh that let's say google purchases or or inst instigates puts on their website it's a software license now when you go right. to google.com you know you're at Google.com because there's a certificate that allows your computer, your the workstation you're working off of, to trust that. Okay, so you know you're actually at TDBank.com or CityBank.com, whatever it is that you're going to. And the man in the middle of attack, basically, what that does is you think you're going to TDBank.com or or, or CityBank.com. And it's really a site that looks just like the site you think you're going mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And that man in the middle attack means you would you were diverted to a site that looks just like what you think it is. And there you are putting your username and password in. Mm -hmm. All right. And you are hacked. Both parties, <coughs> sir, parents and children alike, have their data collected and potentially sold on the dark web. Yep. Or collected upon further to eventually come after you and try some kind of spear phishing I'm or sure. targeted attack I'm on sure. you, you know? Um, how can their, how can parents protect their kids moving forward? Um, now it's interesting how they they talk about it. They're saying that do spot checks. Look at the, look at what's happening on your child's computer I and think do we spot saw, checks. I think we saw a big change in the, the way parents are interacting with their kids during COVID. Mm. Think about it. Kids were home doing distance learning. Yes. And all of a sudden, a bunch of parents see that some of these teachers are teaching their kids about things that they object to. And I don't mm. want to get political here. Mm. Let's just say it's things that people object to. Yes. You yes. might object to certain things. I might object to different things. Right. And, and and it doesn't matter what those things are. If you as a parent object to it, right. all of a sudden they raise their voice and because they're seeing mm -hmm. what their children are interacting with in the classroom. This is why y you can't let the television or the school or the village babysit your child. Mm -hmm. You have to. A good parent takes an active role in 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 their kids' upbringing. You got to meet the teacher. 
you got to talk to them. You got to, you got to, you know, um, you've got to look at what they're looking at online. Take a look. I just to Go interrupt. Ahead. If parents still feel compelled to monitor their children, CEO of cybersecurity firm, <coughs> social engineer, suggests that parents sift through and review their desired apps before downloading Absolutely. Them. And you should all keep your devices fortified for malware, secured. And yes, there should be a review process. For example, in my routers, I can see every device that goes on the internet. Yeah. And if something's suspicious, I can block it, view it further. Right. But being involved in the in in this stuff online, but what do you do with parents that aren't tech savvy? That's the problem. And their kids are going That's nuts the on problem. the internet. You know? Well, maybe uh, United Network Associates can lend a hand with that. You know, because you could probably put together like a security check of uh, your home systems. Sure, sure. There's IT people who do the right, home are, users. Right. Um, we, we only work on corporate computers. I know. But, like, but, uh, but we can advise be. for home computer exactly. people. I recommend that parents get involved. Uh, ask your business computer guy what you should do at home. Uh, it should not be ignored. The hackers are well aware of these vulnerabilities. If you know the someone, the primary target is these kids and their apps. If you know someone who's tech savvy, who's like a technical person, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to throw them fifty bucks to go look at the, the history on your kid's computer. Why hasn't artificial intelligence captured enough data to do some of this automatically? Well, What's happening here? Because there's there's two sides to the coin, I believe. Mm -hmm. You've got the one side where you know the the people who are providing the content want that information, mm -hmm. right? So sure. they're not going to do Very anything valuable. to stop it, right? Valuable um, sales data. You know, and uh, the other side, you know, Facebook is not in the business of protecting you. Yeah, yeah, they just want to make money. Off That's of right. They they're there to make money. So, <laughs> you know, they should protect it's a us. For profit agency, their, but they say that they protect us with. When they block content, they don't feel seem fit. I, well, that that's a whole other issue, you know, about what they Facebook say they're is protecting us. <coughs> well, yeah. their AI engines are figuring out who the bad guy and who the like good guy. Like the Rush song said, "Those who know what's best for us must rise and save us from ourselves." Yes. you know, yes. it's it, it's scary, you know, with this, you know, George Orwellian kind of. Uh, like, we know better than you do kind of attitude. But what you're saying, if the landscape, if the trajectory, if these hackers are going after these kids to such an extent, and even AI can't figure it out yet, that problems of the future will require assessment by the AI engine before it can act. It's well, not an emergency system, if you will. I, th I, think it's, it, I think it's a problem with motives, too. You, know? it, you, you've got, you've, you have, let's say, some companies that, like, I, I, I'm not going to call out specific companies by yeah. name, but some Good. companies wish to promote certain things, right, right. and other companies wish to promote other things. Things yes, yes. and let's say you know one company Profit is like based, really like anti-religion. Another per company is very religious. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so there's different motives involved. Okay, um, if if I believe it still should be done by the company. I believe that capitalism works. If you've got a good product, you will do well because you've got a good product and you take mm. care of your customers and blah blah blah. You you, you do the right things okay. and the Companies that don't deliver a good product okay. will will get weeded out by natural selection. So AI will be required to deliver the oh, right product is. to the customer. It already is. I mean, it's a full integrated system. It's how much AI you're using. Take a look at this, uh, and for instance. Look at this article we're looking at. Advantages and disadvantages of artificial intelligence uh, came out in September 5th of 2020. Um, artificial intelligence, intelligence refers to the simulation mm -hmm. of human intelligence inside a machine mm -hmm. that is programmed to think like humans. Yep. The idea of artificial intelligence begins with computer scientists from 1943 to 56, mm -hmm. a model proposed by Alan Turing. Yeah, Alan Turing, of course. I just can we start and look the uh, known as the Turing test machine. What an incredible movie! What <coughs> an incredible movie! Which was, which movie are you talking about? The one about? that just came out. I forgot the name about the Turing machine. Um, you, you, you. No, 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 the, no, 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 no. Something Careful, we're not allowed to say that. Yeah, yeah, that's something completely uh, different. Trigger warning. Um. Um, <laughs> but he was the scientist who figured out these machines that allowed him uh, to 
uh, thwart the Nazis and figure out their communications. Well, basically, what they that was at uh, Bletchley, uh, Fle- uh, Bletchley Park, right? He figured out how to beat the uh, um, uh, the Enigma machine. Yes, the Nazi it's called Enigma the machine. imitation game. Right, right. The That's imitation right, yes. game, guys. And, Come on, uh, am I the only one? Who no, knows? no. I saw the movie. Um, it's uh, it, it was, from 2014. It's about him. It was it was quite good. Um, it, it, it was. A, it, I thought the movie did, had like a like a little bit of a political agenda behind sure, it, sure. which I didn't really care for. I'd really like to. You know, I wish they would have stuck with the tech. Okay. Um, okay. Right. But, but it did talk about this enigma machine <coughs> that he invented that allowed him to capture what the Nazis were talking well, about. Well, the, the enigma the machine looked like a typewriter. Okay, right. it was like no bigger than like you know the a, a, a nineteen early nineteen sixties mm-hmm. desktop typewriter. Mm-hmm. But that machine allowed the machine him to predict what that was Turing like that. built yes. was bigger than six of these rooms. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what. What it was was a cryptography, cryptology pack that figuring out um, what characters represented what characters and, and looking for uh, making sense sure. of the, so of the I data. So I just want to that- say he's considered the father of AI based on the machine that he created <laughs> um, that allowed him to – as you can see in the for, movie Imitation Game. For 1942, 1943, he right. was way ahead is, of his time. He's considered the 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 originator of artificial yeah. intelligence by having a computer doing that deciphering. I just want to say the movie ends very sadly. It does. Um, while Don't give it he away. He does help in, in, in you know the outcome of the war, obviously. Um, there's a very personal situation that happens to him. It's quite sad. It's amazing how incredible minds in o- of our world are misunderstood. Absolutely. That's what it talks And about. I mean, imagine, like, the Nazis are, like, this close to taking over the entire world, okay? And they've got this way of communicating to their front lines and back to HQ and, and you know, getting supplies, everything from getting supplies to, to bullets to moving troops around. Entire cryptid conversation. Right? And we're watching every single word of it. We broke the Japanese codes, and we broke the Germans' mm-hmm, codes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it does it does speak to the Allies' ability to yeah. to, to break because they never broke our codes. Yes, okay. Um, as <coughs> we knew we exactly know. what they were up to, bef- and, and we couldn't act on some of it. Mm-hmm. There's even a story about, like, you know, that the, the, um, the one, they let a city get bombed mm-hmm. because, and I forget the name of the city, but they let a city get bombed because if they, it, that was a tipping thing. If they, if they would have ratcheted up defense sure. for that city, sure. they they did get the people out though. You know, they they got the people out of it, and they left lights on, so like planes came on over at night, and they fooled them. Or, or how about where Normandy was going to happen? Right, right? right. They right. they uh, they tried to make the Germans believe it was coming in on Port of Calais, sure, right? Sure. But it was really coming down south. Sure. Well, remember also to Hook. for World War One and World War Two, <coughs> astrologers were you know part of the leadership, and, and uh, even D Day was planned on astrological. Uh, feelings, but here comes this machine overriding all this. Um, Take a look at the goal of artificial intelligence includes learning, reasoning, and perception as technology advances the machine that calculates basic operation recognized by a specific type of system which requires a machine to optimize through embodied artificial intelligence. Okay. Let's just stop there for a minute. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you've got this... I want to hear your thoughts on this. It's like basically this this, uh, capable rock, and you're teaching it, and it eventually uh, learns reasoning and self-awareness and perception. How does it... How do you define reasoning? We're teaching it. We're teaching it reasoning. How do you define reasoning? Define by by your your social and personal goals that you pass on as a society or parent to your kids. <clears throat> I would point our listeners and uh, and you, my friend, to a book by Ayn Rand or oh, Ayn yes, Rand, if course. you prefer to pronounce her name in uh, the real Russian uh, <laughs> tongue. Uh, I'll just call her Ayn Rand. Um, uh, she wrote a book called Objectivist Epistemology. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, Anne Rand's the, 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 the grandmother of objectivism, mm-hmm. okay? The, the, the philosophy of standing back from a subject and looking at it dispassionately and trying to make an intelligent decision based on the objective view, okay? Epistemology, the study of why we know what we know. And let me tell you something. This is not a book that you can get through in a night. So sure, I sat there that. and read like a paragraph that I had to go to the dictionary a couple of times for, one paragraph. And I had to like read it over and over again just to understand like what the heck she was talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Hard book to get through, okay? But, the, but I want to I talk about this uh, idea of epistemology, why we know what we know. Yes. Where did we go from uh, a cave uh, Neanderthal, a uh, cave dwelling Neanderthal, to what we are today. How did that happen? How did we start planning for the future and growing crops and thinking about things in more abstract, you know, forms? How did we come up with art and how did we develop technology? And when well, I say technology, there's the different bow. thoughts of how that came about. There's a religious aspect. There's a scientific aspect. A bunch of different aspects. On you it. could take the take the religious aspect off the table. I'm, I'm not talking about how we were inspired by a deity. I'm talking about how We were inspired by survival to come up with better ways to survive, right? So the way to get more corn out of an acre of land, how to get more meat, you know, out of, you know, out of a hunting trip. You know, like basic survival skills that turned into our skills that we still hold today, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the idea that a computer is going to be making that same journey, to me, is, is, is almost obscene. How does a computer develop morality? Where does that, you you say, oh, you program that in? I don't see anybody at Lockheed Martin programming morality to a computer. I I don't see that happening. If it's there, pardon me. But decision making by the machines requires a moral stance. Does it? If you're going to teach it to kill people? If you're going to teach it to be a weapon of war, let's say, okay, that's your enemy over there. Well, okay. you program in that that's not moral. But, but, but though you can't do that. But, but there's movies now, they made about it. You can't uh, kill there's, humans. There's with Will plenty. Smith. There's plenty. <laughs> of, but then there's that one robot that shorts oh, okay. out and everything goes right. haywire. There's plenty of stories in science fiction. It was written about this. Makes it interesting. And that's why we're talking about it now. Hi. Um, <laughs> but the point is, the point is, in our conversation, if you're going to really talk about AI. Right, that shouldn't there be a, a a a law, let's say, for lack of a better word, to say that if you're going to develop AI for military purposes, you also need to put in a certain, give that machine a certain moral compass. Now, now I'm not saying a religious compass. I say a moral compass. You know, I, I hate to be, minute, I hate to go all Richard wait, Dawkins wait, wait. on you're, everybody. You're going really down the rabbit hole. <laughs> That's exactly because, what I'm doing. Because, <laughs> That's because why we're here. <laughs> what are the rights of this machine compared to a human rights? And what are the rights of the machine? And uh, you know, like that that movie, that another movie, Star was, Trek episode, Measure of a Man, a Next how Generation. Do you, you know, what's data the, got put on trial. Are you yeah. a toaster, or are you, are you property of Starfleet, or are you a sanctioned being? You know, able to do whatever you want exactly, to do. Exactly. Exactly. Right? At what point does the machine <laughs> think on its own and take care of itself? Let's make a, a prediction here, and it's just off the top of my head. It's my own prediction, mm-hmm. my own opinion. Okay. I believe that we're about six or seven generations away from building something like data from Star Trek. Wow. You know, that's only a couple I thought of, he was a little too pale, guys. Well, okay, maybe the skin could have looked better. I think yeah. we could do better. I mean... Wouldn't uh, it be a female first? I would think the first... I think the they already make them, but that's not okay. for us to talk yes, about yes. here. Yes, that's for different. Uh, <laughs> okay. I would think that the first real, no, they made that one. That woman. That, yeah, uh, yeah. This the female. Uh, the the female. The, uh, Jimmy yes, Kimmel was yes, talking to yes, her the, uh, a couple Kimmel, of weeks ago, yes, right? Correct, correct. But that was programmed in advance. It, you you can sit there and no, make facial she expressions. Responded. She did not respond extemporaneously. Okay. She sat there, and it was okay. it was like okay. you were going to ask these questions, and the robot's going to give these answers. So okay. let's jump. Let's jump into this for a second. All right. So let's take a look. Here's what our friends take a, a look at: the advantages of AI and the disadvantages of AI. Let's take a look at some of these really interesting. Okay. Forms. Number one, uh, it defines a more powerful or more useful computers. Okay. It's an advantage. Okay, and that's a good thing, right? Uh, I, remember, I am a computer person. Yes. Yes, I want a more powerful and better computer. Okay. 
Um, and and on the disadvantages, the implementation cost of AI is very high. Right now it is. Yes. Think about what a one terabyte drive cost just a few years ago yes. compared to today. So, guys, what do you think? Is it an advantage to have... Uh, is it an advantage to have uh, more powerful computers through AI? What's your take How there? How much more powerful computers do you need? Extremely, ah, ah, extremely ah, powerful. Man after my own heart. Okay, <laughs> thank you, know? you Nick. Extremely <laughs> powerful. As powerful as humanly possible, no. right? Wow. Every time you're sitting there waiting for a computer to do something, yeah. that's where you need more power. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, how much more do you need? <laughs> That's what I always say. Well, what do you need? well, I imagine yeah, exactly. we could be in a full VR realm and it's perfect simulation, sort of, you know? Ah, VR. Mm. Listen, if it, it, we, we brought up a whole new generation of kids yes. that think the world lives in a computer. Yes. It's yes. not okay. Mm. Okay? okay. Go outside, get on your bicycle, go scrape your freaking right. knees and climb a damn tree. Okay, I I I. Can't but we need guinea pigs for this. Listen, stuff, so I played the early on, games kid. too. Play I played Doom iPad. and Quake uh, and Duke yeah. Nukem. Yes. Okay, I played them. I played them too. But you know, it got to a point where that the, the games was so real. Yes. That it's the kids to get lost. They, they young minds can't, you know, figure out. Well, is it real? Is it not real? There are friends like I know people. That make friends on these games. They sit there with their headsets. Never meet them. And they never meet them. They live in different countries, right? And they're like really good friends. But they tell well, me really things. But yeah. they tell me yeah. things about these people in the other yeah. countries. And I'm like, this guy who sits there and, and <laughs> owns a, a dance club sits there and plays a shoot 'em up game with you. Okay, and like I see. No, I get. It. I I, I, my, I I just I live under the let, the, let, the let, law of like I only believe half of what I see and none of what I hear. Let's keep going. Go here. ahead. Go ahead. Number two, it introduces a new and improved interface for human interaction. Oh boy! Such as now I can pop the nano link in my brain and it can help me figure out these things. Um, the disadvantage is that the difficulties of software development for AI implementation. Um, are at the development of software is slow, very expensive, few efficient programmers are available to develop software to implement AI today. It's the groundbreaking point. Yeah, it's, it's new. But the advantage is completely new interfaces and a completely different and improved interaction with your computer. Think for one second what kind of technology we were dealing with mm -hmm. 100 when? years ago. Okay. okay. Wood, analog. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No computers. A hundred years ago, computers didn't exist. A hundred yeah. years ago, it, yeah. it how cool it, is that? Was it a hundred and twenty years ago? Did was the first transatlantic flight, mm -hmm. right? Um, and in a hundred years, a like not even a blink of the eye, like in the updraft of the blink. Okay, in like n a snap of a finger, no time at all. In a hundred years. We went from zero technology, where we had steam engines pulling well, things hold around. Hold on, Rick. You're a Gene Roddenberry fan. Didn't I am. You, weren't you justified from years of watching the show that it makes sense to be part cyborg? I, I don't think it makes sense to be part cyborg. I also remember the M5 computer in the original series mm -hmm. that, that killed a whole bunch of people on a starship yes. while they were doing war games. Yes. Okay? Yes. And, and let's remember the movie War Games. You know, Joshua, the computer, didn't know the difference between real and game. Like, like what's Look, the difference? The Enterprise would not have flown <coughs> if it wasn't for AI. Number three, guys. Hmm. It introduces a new technique to solve new problems. Oh, That's that I'll give you. That's a very positive thing there. You're realizing that the chip will enhance um, solve problem solving in a much faster way. Negative part is a robot is one of the uh, implementations of artificial intelligence with them replacing jobs and lead to serve unemployment. So while um, it introduces new techniques, ultimately, once I get my implant, I will probably be able to do the work of 20 people by myself. You sure you want to? I don't know. It'll be easy. Will I mean, you get 20 times the pay? Mm, okay. You know, they, you, interesting. They, no, no. I just, you know, let, look, we're a capitalistic society. Okay. If, I, if I'm going to put an implant in my brain and I can do the work of 20 people, I want, I want 20, 20 times, times the pay. The pay. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a scale. It'll be scaling slices. Oh, really? So, so, so I get the new chip men. and I can do 50 times as much? 
Yeah. Well, no. Well, no. It depends. If you if you do work of ten men, you get paid for eight. <laughs> well, what about the twenty people? men? You get paid for like sixteen. What about the people scale? that don't get the chip? Well, then I don't. Good they're, luck. P- they're dregs. They're, 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 yeah, they they get they get to live, live, they live under like, the ground. They, like, they live under the ground like troglodytes. No, like uh, yeah, exactly. That's we, it. We get kicked out of the nation. Live, get <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you get pushed to the side. E- either, is, you, either getting the chip implant, or, is, or you're, you can't. Is that's it. Kind of like the vax, right? Right. No, no. Think about, about it. Think about it. If you, you yeah. if if you refuse, completely different. So not different. really. Not really. Completely if different. you refuse the vax, there's companies that will let you go. You'll lose your job because you didn't get vax. But in this case, you can continue to live. You just won't be able to compute properly. You'd be like, oh, this guy with the implant would be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Look, do all this look, stuff, what, and in, you're like, in, in, in my playing. continuation of playing devil's advocate, let me make some, let me brew some my, beer in my backyard. My dad. Had a huge problem with me getting a uh, 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 calculator as a kid. Okay. okay, okay. Now my dad, I, I think he was part Borg because he had the ability, the uncanny ability, of being able to solve very complicated math problems mm-hmm. in his head. Okay. And he challenged me. He said, sa- sa- "My sister would write down a, an equation, like three hundred sixty-four times four hundred and fourteen, right?" It out. And then he'd say, she'd, she'd take her hand away and then say, go, okay? And my dad said, he will beat me doing it on the calculator right. yes. every single – and he did. Yes. Right? I mean, like, we, he went into five – Because he practiced his ass off. Now you don't have to practice. The computer does it all. Think. And Number four, it handles the information better than humans. Better? What's, what does better mean? Better is subjective. I like the word better because it says stronger, mm. faster – you know all of that stuff. Okay, to what end? Uh, to what to what end makes it better? Well, I'll be able to compute at higher speeds without effort. You'll be able it's to better. sit there and look at a painting of tulips and not have to think about the computation look, while the, you have a machine to do it for you. <laughs> the negative, okay, do you see where I'm going yeah. with this? The negative part: machines can easily lead to destruction if the implementation of the machines put the wrong are put into the wrong hands, what could and the results are hazardous to human beings. What could possibly go wrong? There's no way there's going to be another Hitler. Well, well, con- contemplate this number four, right? So. I'm a human. Or I'm Stalin. Not, I've now enhanced myself with the Neuralink. And I am now considering myself somewhat, I'm not better, but different. Are you, are you better? Enhanced. Yeah, I, I, I would I, I would, I had an I would say somebody, somebody with a somebody, somebody with a master's or a doctorate who <laughs> like they sit there and look at us little people like yes, yes. oh yes. I'll be walking around with a cigar and a, and a smoking jacket yeah, this, and, and, and listening and to jazz <laughs> you know <laughs> patches on the elbow yeah you know? yeah yeah and a turtleneck but right. uh, you know I, it can lead to destruction and, and death is the other problem though. That's a now, huge me as a problem. Cyborg, I'm going to say I'm like more of like a machine than I am those lonely humans. That's a huge problem. <laughs> it's it's a moral dilemma. That's why we don't clone human beings. I'm sure the Chinese are doing it. I'm sure they are. So number number four handles information better. I get the neural link. It's, I'm it's now like the robot. Not the Chinese people, the Chinese government. It can Big lead difference. to destruction. The point I'm trying to make, though, <coughs> because of my moral compass with the implant, everything will be all right, Rick. Yeah. Everything's yeah. going to be just you fine. You think so, right? Yeah, don't worry, you think man. So. So, so when, when, when your kid has just to grow up in jab. a maturation chamber and you, have, and, and you have to plug into a regeneration station at night, like the Tesla car, you know, and you not only have to get recharged, you have to you can yes. download information and yes. you have to go through a regeneration stage yes, like yes. seven of nine. Hopefully it doesn't crash in the code updates. Ah, ah. Wait, when was the last time? <coughs> you know, t- this week my Windows machine crashed three times. Mm. What happens when that thing has a problem inside of my off. cranium? Good luck. You got a day off. Good, ah, good, good. Take the day off. Look, they've got two more positive things. It's very <laughs> and, helpful. And two more positive things without negative sides. Yes, Notice yes. this here, guys. Um, it's very helpful for the conversion of information into knowledge. That is so untrue. I disagree with that completely. Information does not equal knowledge. I don't sit there and do a computer-based training course and consider myself, ooh, I'm smart. That's not the way any of this works. But it I'm is a because teacher. The information gained on these edge devices from these IoT devices. The only devices thing that's gaining the knowledge is, is the computer. Is, is, hold on. That information of the data 
requires humans to turn into I think this is the first time we've actually AI. had a disagreement. Oh, really? No. I didn't like, but that, like, really, it's like one really? of the first times that we've, no, we've ever, like. No, we've had a couple of times, dude. No, no, not like this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I, I seriously want to knock you out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh man! Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I wonder this week on Cybermasters. <laughs> Round, <three. laughs> Round three. No, I had a commercial for that too. I think <laughs> I think that number five is 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 completely an uh, erroneous co- uh, point. It makes no sense. There, it, it is very helpful for the conversion of information into knowledge. Totally. That sounds like political. No, speak. no, you got all this information. It's, it's turning <laughs> information into knowledge. Well, the how? computer's not very happy if you well, make wait that minute, face, wait, wait, wait. I'll tell you that. How? Like, wait, how did that turn into the... knowledge? Oh, so we're reading it on the screen, so it must be true. No, no, no. C- people have to make the determination. Computers shouldn't right, be I'm... doing all this stuff for us. In number five, the collector of information that turns into knowledge it currently requires human intervention. And as it should be. Maybe later, maybe not. It, but I, I, I don't for, know. Listen, for certain things like or, like reordering like a half gallon of milk, sure. Let the computer do it, yes. okay? But, you know, making a decision about investments in my 401k and things like that, no, no, no. I want to look. I'll make – and if I make a mistake, it's all my fault. I don't have to blame anybody else. Thank you. But now the AI will know that you didn't order milk on certain times and you have a vitamin D deficiency now. So it'll and give me some your vitamins? policy now just went up. <laughs> and it'll make an appointment for me to see my doctor. And before um, you know it, there we go. And number six, Let's. it improves work efficiency. So reduce the duration of time to accomplish a task in comparison to a standard human. Oh, yeah. So you're working so much yeah. faster. Put the chip in, you're like, blah, blah, blah. That's everything, what I've got perfect. Co- the moment mistakes, I'm good to go. Bro, mistakes. bro, that's what coffee does, okay? That's, it's, it's already here, okay? Pike's coffee, Place, huh? you know, okay, and, and okay. a Keurig, you know, you're doing that, okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You want to go back to the ice cream? We'll go back to the ice cream. I don't know. I, I get the sense by all this conversation with AI <laughs> that, that we're like, you know, we, we really – are close and we really want this machine to be the best thing we've ever done as a human grace. Nah, I think the, And just like Gene Roddenberry talked about the same thing. I think the man. best thing that we ever create, the best thing we ever did is our children. Mm-hmm. Okay? That you know and they're analog, okay? That's that's like an LP vinyl with a needle, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's analog, okay? Mm-hmm. That and the best thing you can do is to be a great parent and to bring up good responsibly a socially responsible children that become socially responsible adults mm-hmm. who okay. could take care of your butts mm-hmm. when you sit coffee. sitting there you, you can't go to the bathroom by yourself. <laughs> and coffee helps us get there. Yeah. Coffee more than uh AI. I don't know. Um, I got to tell you, I mean, we're talking about this. For me, I see that uh, being able to compute at high levels and all I have to do is get a chip implanted in my brain. I know there'll be maintenance and I may not feel so good on some days, you know. No, you probably feel great because you're programmed. And uh, yeah. You're programmed. How do you feel? I feel perfect. Constantly pushing. You're programmed to be a certain way. (laughs) Maybe, I don't know, you know, there's many ways to look at it, but, you might not you know, like the person that you are. there's so yeah, many yeah, been... problems in the world, you know, um, <laughs> why, why not? I'm myself to be a trampoline Why athlete. not just go through life with this, with, with, with this appendage that's going to give you potentially because a better life? Because it's scary. It, yeah, of course it's scary. So is getting a colonoscopy. Uh, look, look, you do it. And I'll and I'll, and I'll watch the colonoscopy. We're, we're doesn't we're yeah, the co- co- colonoscopy it. is 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 a thing to look to see if you've got bugs growing up your butt. That's okay. a different thing, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a different thing, you know, because they see the bugs starting out early, they can fix the problem, right? I I feel completely open to have surgery and have the Elon Musk Neuralink implanted in my skull. Elon, you hearing this, bud? So I can. So uh, I can. Walk into a room and have full access to my machine. And so, like, what you'll see through your own eyes will look like the Terminator, beep, 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 like with with stuff, data going on. like the Predator, man. Like the, oh, oh, the Predator, here we go, here we go. You're programmed to be a certain way, no? You might be programmed to be a certain way. He's sitting there with a cup of Joe sitting in the corner. (laughs) What he's really thinking is he can kill everybody in the room. Well, ultimately, I think, much like the Predator, though, the answer is a bodysuit with technology. 
And while we unfortunately as a humanity have to go through this um, very crazy bastardization of our humanity and create all these uh, mechanical appendages, I do believe it'll lead to the resolution that the human body is very precious and should not be altered and all this technology re should live in a body suit. And you want to live in a body also, suit now? No, no. Which is I'm worried. I'm worried about him. Look at all the. Look at all the. He's my friend. I'm worried look about at all him. The technology, all the alien <laughs> stuff you see out there. All you see is naked aliens. In my logical solution, an advanced alien form has recognized the not altering their body and making an advanced suit that does all of these things. Well, with the Independence Day, they were wearing those suits. Yes. They smelled really bad underneath but, them. But the generation, a generation or two before I'll them, take his word for it. In yeah. my opinion, <laughs> uh, society has realized from before then that they were manipulating their bodies until one day they woke up and realized, let's work it out otherwise. The answer is a body suit. But to get to the bodysuit, we're going to need a link anyway. So it's got to start somewhere. Well, you know? uh, but the ultimate goal is a bodysuit. That's, no, that's, that's, an body. that's an interesting thing that it's like it's external to the body, okay? That it's not – it's integrated with you, but it's not – but it's actually an external thing. Yes. Okay. And that – External thing could have like could give you enhanced strength, let's say. Yes. Right. With the bodysuit, you can pick up a heavy object where you couldn't yeah. before. You could look at the world very uh, interesting way. I mean, I mean, yes, World War Two was one of the worst things that ever happened. But it was also but the something that caused us. Experiments and results yeah. are none. The technological leaps are undeniable to yes. mankind. Yeah. So, so again, similar like that, we're going to have to have mutilated bodies to one day realize how bad it was. That's, that we shouldn't do that. To that's humans. frightening. I mean, we have if we haven't learned that, that lesson yet, as 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 a, as a human race. No, I mean seriously, it's a human race. <laughs> if we haven't learned that lesson yet by what happened in the last couple of wars, I mean, like you know, World War Two, most notably. If we haven't learned that lesson yet, what the heck is going on? We haven't learned that lesson. Look at the experimentation. What's happening with chemicals? And I mean, for example, I've been reading. About about what do you mean uh, like meth? About about children being uh, egged on by doctors to have have, have change uh, operations. We, we said we were going to get political. I, I'm just saying there in all kinds of factions in the we world these these, the, the, these chemical things and, and technologies are being used to enhance us. People at the push end their own realize don't touch the human body. People push their own agenda forward, and some people have a very strange agenda. If we survive the experiments we have to do on one another, we'll realize and we'll I, come out the other side as aliens with awesome bodysuits. I survived an experiment, okay? I took the Pfizer shot set, yes. the both shots. It nearly killed me. But look at your hair now. I know. The hair is great. <laughs> but the hair was <laughs> great before the shot, too. Nah, no, it's okay. better. It's look. The, hair, the hair was great before the shot. Look, bro. You know, it, it's... <laughs> you, you can't... You, you got to brought it back to the hair. So. It, yeah, because, you know, I, I'm being objectified. Let, let, let me just jump into this last piece of information. <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. This is the Intel report on building edge-to-cloud AI infrastructure. We're going to spend a moment on this. Yeah, quick moment because the show's almost over. Yeah, um, but um, it talks about Once we Intel's get going, plan, we can really... And loquacious. really detailed information about how edge computing, whether it's it's done on a human, on a house, on a uh, whatever way, and how it's being measured. And Intel's plan, you can find this on their website. You see the, mm -hmm. the name and the link there. I didn't read this particular article. I didn't have time to read this particular article. But. Detailed information with schematics of the plan that Intel... The leader in CPU technology has to get to this point using their product, of course. Um, well, <laughs> yes, sir. I think I think what Intel is doing is is making they're, lots of money. They're, well, of course, they're the industry leader. Okay, um, I, th I I believe that what they're doing right now is 
They're just kind of like rehashing this the same old technology over and over again, making it smaller and smaller and smaller, and and adding more cores into a chip, you know, right? And it, but we're not changing. They're not changing anything. But the computing power is doubling and tripling, and quadrupling, and all of that. You know? um, if you take a look at there real quick, um, a use cases example: computer vision supports delicate conservation efforts. Smart cameras and video anal- analytics provide a great opportunity to help monitor and protect endangered habitats where the physical presence of conversation, conservation workers can be difficult to get to. You no, know, listen, that's, that's, fa- that's fantastic so use of technology. All these edge devices yes. talking to, and bam, somebody's yeah. creating a wildfire, God forbid. These, these, are, these are also the same kind of technologies used with ocean buoys. Yes, right? correct, yes, to, totally. Because you know, we've got ships like literally mm-hmm. like all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there's, you know, knowing what the water's doing is very important, especially when you've yes. got a, a ship with like thousands of containers on it. Right. You know? um, so this is, this is all part of keeping that infrastructure up and running. How can we make the infrastructure better? Yes. Um, how did uh, this current president ruin the infrastructure? I'm kidding. Um, the, he's not a computer guy. It doesn't matter. No, he's not. He's not. But my, my point but Lockheed is, Martin's going to help. No, my, my, point, my point is this is all going to grow organically. Yes. No matter what anybody does. This, this part of it has to grow organically because it can always be improved. Yes. There's, no, yes. th- there's no part of our infrastructure that couldn't go with some improvement in some way. What, okay. What's nice about what's coming is when computers were invented, security wasn't taken into consideration. It wasn't even a Here, thought. Here, AI and security is melting. There's, a, there's, a, there's yep. a real foundation on security when you're building The that. idea of security has changed yes. because of AI. Um, yes, but the security has come to terms uh, today where it's going to be a driving factor in developing this technology mm-hmm. when it wasn't even a driving factor in developing IoT technology. Not even a couple of years ago. Not right, a just, years a, ago. just a few short years ago, yes. So just real quick, Intel, build a strong foundation, right? Map your data pipeline, develop your AI models, and deploy your AI workloads is their approach of how they're going to integrate AI environments together. Um, again, Intel is really top of the food chain as the yes. CPU that sits in your computer, as the brain, with these uh, co- constant accelerations that are going on. But it's and still their that's... chips are going to be processing this data that will be measured and ultimately made a decision it's maker. Sti- it's right? still the same AMD core, okay? That AMD design. Yeah, Even the Intel chip is using an AMD design. Yes. I bet you guys didn't know that one. Okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, well, sure, there's other competitors. <coughs> well, the, the, the point I'm making is, is that the real <coughs> strate- you know, stratospheric jump yes. is going to be when we get off these stupid Intel chips mm. and move towards the quantum computing mm. mm-hmm. platform. Yes, yes. Right? yes. And now, you know, all these chips just crunch ones and zeros. All when the, it gets all to those... a large, massive scale. Now, think saying. about... Instead of the computer looking at a, a circuit, right, and saying, okay, it's one for on, zero for off, right? Yes, yes. And what happens when it looks at a, a, a circuit and it says it could be on and off at the same time? Mm. It could be neither on mm. or off. Mm-hmm. It could be in any infinite number of juxtapositions in between one and zero. Well, you know, there is when, there's where you make a, a, a jump, a, right. a paradigm shift yes. between... The ones in the, the bean counter right, CPUs sure. that we have today and, and the future ones. of computing. Mm. The big problem is heat. Yes, heat distribution. You're going to punch so much electricity through that CPU that's doing the quantum computing. It gets incredibly hot. It can only be cooled with liquid nitrogen. And now MIT is saying that liquid nitrogen is just not doing the job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What was it? Uh, Gotta get it down Glenn to like, like twelve Kelvin. Yeah, is a, is is a, is at UConn, <coughs> and they got the IBM's uh, computer, and it's basically a huge refrigerator yeah, with we, a computer inside. Right, basically, yeah. Um, so I just want to say we tested out uh, a number of technologies over the last couple of years. One of them, which was a very tiny computer, 
on sort of a credit card that plugged into a a a, a harness, and that was the computer. Now, extremely yeah, fast, remember similar that. specs, but heat distribution caused that CPU uh, to slow down after some time. Yep. Now, there are Dell and other manufacturers who make microcomputers, very small machines. Yeah. And heat distribution is the primary reason it will slow down and not compute. And everybody maximum. who ever had a laptop on their bed yes. knows the heat that comes out of a laptop. That's yes. cooling the CPU inside. Yes. That's that's you know that's a problem, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why in, in a desktop computer you've got like the liquid cooling that, that the gamers like to use, right? Yeah. Now imagine taking that to one step further when you go like it goes. Uh, even further from liquid cooling, yeah. you know, yeah. when you you need liquid nitrogen to cool it, mm. okay, that's not practical for the regular person or like even the technology people like us sure, to but, use but, in our home. But look, we're manufacturing or even in our data on center. Earth, and we're using on Earth. If if this stuff was created in space in a different temperature mode, <coughs> exactly, very exactly, it's good point. Space, you know, yeah, we're sure. building and using space now. The cooling is much different. Uh, that's true. That's um, very true. You know, yeah. So so who knows? What's but the, there's one more thing I want to bring up. Yeah. Is now you're going to have you have a computer with a different uh, set of a way it can process instructions, you've got to build an operating system that can take advantage of it and then write application software on that platform sure. to take advantage. That's not easy. Sure. Well, Rick, you and I opened with this too and we talked about this mm -hmm. a lot. Um, humanity on a general level or documented humanity for the last uh, thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, whatever it may be, it seems that um, a lot of technology ends up being used for maybe not the best reason or used against humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, um, that's worrisome. Um, do we have a chance this time? Whew, do we have a, you know, I am a, uh, a fan of Gene Roddenberry, I, I, and I believe that Roddenberry's message to us was pushing a, an optimistic view of mm -hmm. the future forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the original series, had a Russian, yeah. a Chinese helmsman, right. a black uh, woman for, on communications, and, yes. a, and a, gosh darn, alien as a science officer. Yes, yeah. You know, talk about diversity in the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> for the 60s, that was unheard of, okay? And and probably why it didn't do so well with the audience it it, it it went to initially and people like said you know this is really great after the fact that's yeah. why it, it lasted so long I, I saw I saw a but thing, I'm optimistic yeah. I saw a thing from um, Captain Uhura being interviewed I forgot her real name the, Nichelle Nichols Nichelle Nichols, Nichols. Yeah. and she Thanks. said that. She said, you know, after a while, I didn't know what I was doing on the show. Yeah, she was going to quit. I couldn't, I couldn't fit. And she met Martin Luther King Jr. And he yeah. said, what you're doing on the show is changing America. That's right. And she cried. Yep. And she says, I'm going full sport. It, yep. Martin Luther King told her to keep going with the show. It was her duty to do so. I, I, I believe that's what Nichelle Nichols yeah. said. It was like, yeah. you have yeah. to do this. You have to yeah. do yeah. this. Yeah. And it was that huge. Cry when I heard it that, was, I was it like, was Damn, huge. Man, Think about it. Awesome, nobody had, nobody put a bridge officer, you know, who was like. Think about it. We're in the Cold War with the Russians, and there's Chekhov, you know, saying, yeah, it was invented by a little old lady from Moscow. No, you know, the, the little I, jokes that came in. It made them look. It made everybody look human. Yes, yes. For lack of a better way to yes, say it, yes. right? Even the I, aliens, yeah. as different as they were, some of them. They all had this human aspect. Sure. And that's, I mean, they could use like Aretha Franklin or somebody. Or, I, I think Ahura sang pretty good. I mean, yeah, she was with yeah. no Aretha Franklin, but she was okay. Well, I'm just saying, you know, had, mm -hmm. she did a good job. I think a, she did a fantastic actor, job. You know? I think she did a I think they all did a fantastic job. I think Absolutely. they were all perfect for Absolutely. the parts. Yeah, they did. They you was, know? It was done. You know, right, yeah. right down the line. How many I shows? Mean, 39 episodes? I think it was only 30. 39 episodes. Oh, man, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it was only what two, three seasons. Three seasons. Three seasons. Yeah. So seventy nine episodes. <laughs> you know, I mean, you so think when about I was it, a little boy in Vienna. I watched the whole thing in German. Oh. And when we came here, it was the mid eighties, and we landed, and we watching TV, and Star Trek comes on, and I'm like, all right, great, I'm gonna listen to them in their something, original language, yeah. and they're talking English. I'm like, why are these guys talking English? Everything was dubbed in German, and he goes, "Don't worry, the Americans would never be able to invent, never be able to invent a ship like that anyway." Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
I've got but a I've got a German, German joke if you want to hear it yes, to close the show, yes, please, right? Let's hear it. I I believe that everybody should tell the people around them how much they love them and how much they care about them. Amen. Never let them forget, but they should say it really loud and in German because that's scary and the world is scary and they should be prepared to be scared. Like with this AI, AI thing. Um, so basically, good night and Achtung! <laughs>